ان الحمد لله نحمد ونستعين ونستغفره اعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها فان كل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار وانما توعدون لات وما انتم بمعجزين ان شاء الله in this morning session we're going to change a little bit from the 40 hadith for imam nawawi to read from kitab riyad as-salihin guardian of the righteous to enforce the khutbah of yesterday inshallah so we're going to read the last chapter from volume 2 which is chapter number 372 babu bayan ma a'adda Allah ta'ala lil mu'minina fil jannah this chapter concerning what Allah had prepared for the believers in jannah and this is inshallah to be a more encouragement for us that we try to do more for jannah and we don't know sometimes something may be so little and in your eye or in your eyes is not that great but allah can make it with his mercy he means for you to be in jannah and we are familiar with hadith rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam about the sinful woman from bani israel which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appreciated her deed and made her to go to jannah so she was so bad so sinner and it say mra'atun baghi that mean a prostitute woman but because a drink of water a water that she gave to even not a human being she gave it to a dog but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had appreciated this and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it means for her to enter jannah so we always have to be eager towards something that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if it's a piece of trash on the ground or something dirty on the floor of the mosque, we see this black woman that used to be in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu used to clean the mosque. And this is her volunteer work. This is what she felt that she can do. But when she died, the Sahaba took care of business. But the Prophet Sallallahu one night or one day, he missed her from the mosque. He asked, where is this lady he used to clean? They say, oh, Prophet of Allah, she passed away. Say, why you did not inform me? So I said, oh, Prophet of Allah, we didn't want to disturb you. Because after Isha or you sleeping or taking your rest, we don't want to disturb you. But because the great job that she was doing, and the only one can acknowledge this and know about it, how great it is, was the Prophet ﷺ, because Allah showed him. So the Prophet ﷺ specially went to her grave and made a funeral janaza on her to, to appreciate what she was doing. So we have to be always eager to do things which is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if it's too small to us 
okay, it's not something great. But Allah can make it as a means for you for forgiveness. It means for you to be in Jannah. It means for you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with you. قال الله تعالى إن المتقين في جنات وعيون أدخلوها بسلام آمنين ونزعنا ما في صدورهم من غل إخوانا على سرر متقابلين لا يمسون فيها نصب وما هم منها بمخرجين Verses The last chapter On chapter 372 Yeah Indeed uh, the pious or the righteous people are in yeah. Allah the Exalted says, of which the meaning is, truly the mutaqeen, the pious and the righteous person, will be amidst gardens and water springs. It will be said to them, enter therein, i.e. paradise, in peace and security, and we shall remove from their breasts any deep feeling of bitterness that they may have. So they will be like brothers facing each other on thrones. No sense of fatigue shall touch them, nor shall they ever be asked to leave. So Allah made this special for who? For muttaqeen. So those who avoid of evil, those who try to stay away from the sins, those who try their best to be pleased in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who have the taqwa of Allah, staying away from any doubtful thing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make jannat for them. And this is the plural of jannah. Because Jannah is so huge, it's so great. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them a lot of Jannat. Okay? Ayun, water, springs. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Udkhuluha. Or He makes the angels to say, Enter it with peace. Peace, tranquility. No, di no disaster, no fatigue, no disturbance. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying about something very important. Because sometimes when you see other people have something, you be jealous, you envy. But Allah says that we remove, Allah will take away this envy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes this hatred out of their hearts. And they became like brothers, sitting, reclining, on solar, on beds, couches. There is no fatigue. So this is, will be removed. The sadness, the illness in the hearts, the jealousy, and also no tiredness. And now the security that sits there, lives there, you are not going to be taken out. Because we know for a fact that in this life we are not going to live forever. Doesn't matter how nice, how comfortable your bed, how big your mansion, your, but you know you're going to die. Okay, one day you'll be dying living with somebody else. Alright? Or for some reason, somebody come pick you up, put you in jail. You are not bigger than presidents and kings. How many read in the history that a person became king? A year later he's in jail or a president. You know how things go, especially nowadays. But Allah says they are not be taken out. So they have the mind, the security of the mind and the security of the body also. Security of the mind, this is very important. You are not losing the pleasure. Okay? You are not be going to take it out. The lease never going to be over. Your lease is not going to be over. You'll be always there. Okay? وَقَالَ تَعَالَى يَا عِبَادِ لَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْكُمُ الْيَوْمَ وَلَا أَنْتُمْ تَحْزَنُونَ الذين آمنوا بآياتنا وكانوا مسلمين ادخلوا الجنة أنتم وأزواجكم تحبرون يطاف عليهم بصحاف من ذهب وأكواب وفيها ما تشتهيه الأنفس وتلذ الأعين وأنتم فيها خالدون وتلك الجنة التي أورثتموها بما كنتم تعملون لكم فيها فاكهة كثيرة منها تأكلون فضل it will be said to the true believers of Islamic monotheism, My worshippers, no fear shall be on you this day, nor shall you grieve. You who believed in our ayah, proofs, verses, lessons, signs, revelation, etc., and were Muslim, i.e. those who submit totally to Allah's will 
and believe in the oneness of Allah. Enter paradise, you and your <coughs> wives in happiness. Trays of gold and cups will be passed around you. There will be therein all that inner selves could desire, and all that eyes could delight in, and you will abide therein forever. This is the paradise which you have been made to inherit because of your deeds which you used to do in the life of the world. Therein for you will be fruits in plenty, of which you will eat as you desire. In this verse in Surah Al-Zukhruf, that we found Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, started the verse, Ya Ibad. Why does that mean? They did not get Jannah for nothing, but because they enslaved themselves to Allah in this dunya. So as a result of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewarded them. He say, Ya Ibad, they are the worshippers of Allah, those people who submit themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No fear, no sadness. No fear, no sadness. Okay? Those who used to be Muslims, those who submitted themselves willingly to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and one of the main things of the pleasures that you will get your family there. Okay? He said, Udkhulu al-Jannah antum wa azwajukum. Enter Jannah, you and your families, your wives, your relatives, okay? Because this is also have a different pleasure to be with your family in Jannah, okay? Of course, you understand this was the condition of Iman. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the Prophet Nuh, إِنَّهُ لَيْسَ مِنْ أَهْلِكِ إِنَّهُ عَمَلٌ غَيْرُ صَالِحِ When Allah, Prophet Nuh asked Allah to save his son, Allah told him he is not from your family. Although that this is his son, but due to the kufr and disbelief, now he did not become to be a family. Okay? So your true, real family are the believers. This is what Allah said, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً the believers are nothing except the brothers. Okay? So one of the pleasures of Jannah that you will see your mate, your wife, your husband, <coughs> your children with you. But this was the condition of Iman. And after this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the cups, the plates, even the dishes that they're going to use there. And in addition to this, he said, whatever that you desire. So it's not limited to what is there, but whatever that you're going to desire, if it's not there, Allah will give it to you. That Allah will answer the call of your desire there, that you will get whatever that you think, because you're still a human being. You think there is something else that you want it as entertainment or a pleasure, that you don't see it there, so Allah will give you whatever that you desire. Like one of the Sahaba asking the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, because he's a farmer, or he's a shepherd, so it's going to be plantation there, okay? Do we have camels? Do we have this? Okay? So whatever that you desire, you get it there, okay? And again, the point of security, وَأَنْتُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ because you can be in a, in a pleasure, but it's temporary. You can be in a pleasure, but now you have a headache. You could not enjoy it. You get sick, whatever. But Allah is saying what? They're going to be there forever. And that you are here in Jannah because what? بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ This as a result of your deed. So we need to plant deed here in this life. Doesn't matter small or big, if it's a dime, nickel, or a hundred thousand dollars, okay? Your deed, and your intention. A person can be have only ten dollars, and a person have ten thousand dollars. But the person who donate one dollar, he give one tenth of what he own. A person who give a thousand dollars, okay, he took from all this what he got. And a thousand dollar. So don't keep thinking about this is small, this is big, that your intention, your sincerity, okay, 
why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave for something one blessing and each blessing ten. But he telling us that for some people they get seven hundred. And for other people doing the same deed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yudha'ifu liman yasha, multiply to whom he wants. Okay? But can be the same deed. You pray two rak'at, I pray two rak'at, she pray two rak'at. The sincerity, the devotion. There is many things. It go to change the reward. But the bottom line is that Allah never neglect any good deeds that you do. You will get a reward for it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, إن المتقين في مقام أمين في جنات وعيون يلبسون من سندس وإستبرق متقابلين كذلك وزوجناهم بحور عين يدعون فيها بكل فاكهة آمنين لا يذوقون فيها الموت إلا الموتة الأولى ووقاهم عذاب الجحيم فضلا من ربك ذلك هو الفوز العظيم Verily, the multaqum, the pious, will be in place of security, i.e. Jannah, among gardens and springs, dressed in fine silk, and also in thick silk, facing each other, so it will be. And we shall marry them to Hur, fair females with wide, lovely eyes. They will call therein for every kind of fruit in peace and security. They will never taste death therein, except the first death of this world, and he will save them from the torment of the blazing fire as a bounty from your Lord that will be the supreme success. <laughs> no death. You already had tasted the death one time, okay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had told us, that Allah will bring the death in the form of a lamb, big sheep. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, O oh, people of Jannah, do you know what's this? O oh, people of hellfire, do you know what's this? Do you recognize it? He said, yes, this is death. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will order that this ram, this sheep to be killed. So the death will be killed. That means no more. And after this, Allah, no more death. Say, O oh, people of Jannah, khulud. O oh, people of hellfire, khulud. Oh, people of hellfire forever now. From now on, on, no hope. Okay, this is the death. We kill the death. So now those who are in hellfire after this moment, they will be there forever. And those people who are in Jannah will be in Jannah forever. No more death. Forever. One more verse, inshallah. We, after this, we go to our... Morning exercise, we see more soldiers coming this morning. We shouldn't use the word soldiers, but we are here soldiers for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the way of Allah, okay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated, And you notice in these verses, Allah calls them one time muttaqeen, one time muslimin, one time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say al-abrar, okay? Because is different, different forms of ibadah. Allah did not give us one form of ibadah. And some people have more energy in fasting than salah. Some people have more energy for voluntarily prayer than fasting. Some people have the ability to spend more than others. So for everybody there is a share. And a wise Muslim will do will try to do what? to try to engage in all this quality as much as to be mutaqeen, to be from the muslimin, to be from the muhsineen, to be from the abrar, okay? Because all these things like a race, like a race, everybody try to be a winner. And subhanallah, everybody will be a winner. Everybody will be a winner. And especially when you are in Jannah, there is no hatred, no jealousy. But the people, everybody thinks that he is the one because what Allah had given him or her. All right? He will think that no one have more than him. Okay? So they will feel this. So this is, is not going to be any kind of disturbance happening to them. Oh, why? Look, what they got. Look, look to their house. 
But subhanallah, everybody will be content and everybody will be happy. So here Allah given a different terminology, say, inna al-abrara. And you find always this inna for sure. No doubt about the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna lil muttaqina mafaza. Okay? So here Allah say about the righteous now. Inna al-abrara la fi na'im. Ala al-ara'ik yanzurun. Ta'arifu fi wujuhihim nadrata al-na'im. Yusqawna min rahiqin makhtum. Khitamuhu misk. Wa fi thalika fal yatanafas al-mutanafisun. Competition. Race, go ahead. وفي ذلك, in this, فليتنافس المتنافسون. ومزاجه من تسنيم عينا يشرب بها المقربون. Another description, quality. فضل. Verily, al abra the pious, the righteous, will be in delight, paradise, on thrones looking at all things. You will recognize in their faces the brightness of delight. They will be given to drink of pure sealed wine. The last thereof, i.e. that wine, will be the smell of musk. And for this, let all those strive who want to strive, i.e. hasten earnestly to the obedience of Allah. It, that wine, will be mixed with tasneem, a spring whereof drink those nearest to Allah. Alhamdulillah, we'll close inshallah with this hadith, and hopefully that when you go home, this morning or tonight, whenever you try to finish this chapter in your house, this hadith that we narrated in the khutbah yesterday, and Jabri radiallahu an, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal, ya'kulu ahlu al-jannah fiha, wa yashrabun, wa la yatagawatun, wa la yatamakhatun, wa la yamtakhitun, wa la yabulun, wa lakin ta'amuhum, thalika jusha' qarashh al-misk, يلهمون التسبيح والتكبير كما يلهمون النفس رواه مسلم نارد جابر رضي الله عنه that Allah's messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said the inhabitants of paradise will eat and drink therein but they will not have to pass excrement to blow their noses or to urinate their food will be digested producing a belch which give out a smell like that of musk. They will be inspired to glorify Allah and proclaim His greatness as easily as you breathe. The last thing that you see in the hadith, what? This is not obligation, because no obligation in paradise. The salah, the fasting, the, the zakah, all these things here in this dunya. But there, with all this pleasure, there is there something special there. Stay the glorification. Subhanallah. Alhamdulillah. And this is not that require any effort like we do here. Huh? You have some time to drag your feet to do some salah or some zakah or whatever. But yulhamuna at tasbih. Okay? What takbir? Subhanallah. Allahu Akbar. Would be something like automatically happening to you, okay? That will be so easy, as easy, even when you go to sleep, you find yourself what? Breathing, in and out. Doesn't matter if you're sleeping or you're awake. So it will be the tasbih, glorification of Allah. And the takbir, Allahu Akbar, will be that easy and will be said, okay? By them. And this is something that we need to focus in it. The rahma of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from the people of Jannah. Amen. That Allah enable us to do the deeds that make us qualified to enter Jannah. Amen. Oh, Allahumma adkhinna al-Jannah. Allahumma adkhinna al-Jannah. Allahumma adkhinna al-Jannah. Allahumma ja'anna min al-Muttaqeen. Ja'anna min al-Muslimin. Ja'anna min al-Abrar al-Salihin. Nas'aluka al-Afwa wa al-Afiyah wa al-Mu'afat al-Daimah. في الدين والدنيا والآخرة وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين سبحانك اللهم بحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك نتوب إليك أن الله نسبس Do we have any news or anybody want to pass some information related to the community inshallah before we
start cleaning up or whatever you want to call it morning exercise sister Zahida subhanallah and, and somewhat may Allah reward you sister Allah, yes last night after I went to home I want to call you and suggest this I say I'm not disturbing her anymore and maybe it's too late this was you call as if you read my mind. The sister made some grits and boiled eggs for you. I hope that Habibi have some coffee also and that we can have some coffee. But inshallah, we'll try not to make the things. But we can take turns. Some people work and some people eat. And after this, some people, they will eat if there is food left, okay? And the other people will work, inshallah. Shalom. Don't tell me you brought donuts now. We'll a little bit more food. <laughs> oh, subhanallah. May Allah reward you, all of you. May Allah reward you, all of you. Amen. May Allah bless all the Muslims everywhere. Amen. Allah, brothers and sisters, when I went to this Imam conference, I want to talk to you in khutbah al Jum'ah about it. But we should be grateful and thankful to Allah. We, although that we, the conference for Imams, we have about 170 Imams there from all over the United States. But we, some of the relief organization directors, they come also there to make a small presentation, like five minutes, each one of them. Wallah, I left to understand one of this was five minutes. I was crying like a baby. And if we think about what we have in this life here, when you see the things happening in Syria, in Iraq, all these things, you could not, you could not understand. If you keep, subhanallah. So, we are here living in America, not in <laughs> in Islamic country. Look, what, about 30 people, 25 people sitting, you could not do it there. You could not do it in different countries. Nowadays, more than three people, you'll be in trouble. More than three people, this consider you gathering. We don't to go have to inform the FBI or CIA or whatever it is, five o'clock in the morning, six o'clock in the morning, they come to the mosque. We have to count our blessings. These people, no dunya, no deen, okay? They could not. They have no security about their food. They don't have a security about their, their deen or their salah. If you grow his beard, he can be in trouble. If you understand, you, when you see the things that happening nowadays, this day, this moment while we're sitting, for Muslims, for children, for little kids, little kids, it's so crazy. We should be grateful and thankful to Allah to what we have. We can eat, we can sit and talk about Islam. We can, subhanallah, we should be grateful and thankful <laughs> to Allah and ask Allah to keep the ni'mah on us and also that Allah make us grateful to it. When you see what's happening, it's so much to be even described. And this should make you grateful to what you have and to appreciate what you got. Because many, many, many places you could not freely sit down, even reading Quran. Subhanallah. So we should be grateful and thankful. We have a mask. We can be in the mask. We don't hear any uh, helicopters. Any, any, any crazy stuff. You understand? Kids they see, seeing, you understand their parents or, or their brother, their sister killed in front of them and legs and all kind of things flying in the air. And this is day and night. People walking in the streets, they don't know where to go. They don't know where to go, where to hide. It's so sad. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us masjid here. We, we can sit down and we can read and... And after this, he found some of us dragging their feet, dragging their feet. You can have all the food you want. You can have all the, but there is no security. 
How are you going to enjoy anything? This he found that Allah said, إِلَى فِي قُرَيْشٍ إِلَى فِيهِمْ رِحْلَةَ الشِّتَاءِ وَالصَّيْفِ فَلْيَعْبُدُوا رَبَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ الَّذِي أَطْعَمَهُ مِنْ جُوعٍ وَأَمَنَهُمْ مِنْ خَوْفٍ If there is a خوف and fear there, you could not enjoy anything in your life. You can have all the food that you have. You can have all the money that you got. But there is no security you don't know how you're going to protect or save this money, how you're going to eat, or what they can eat, you understand? is security. We have in security. We are living in, in, in a way much, 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 much better than Muslims who live in, in Islamic country. And we should be grateful and thankful to Allah and showing better and more deed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to thank what we in. And in the meantime also I learned a lesson, you understand, from this conference that I shouldn't stop anybody to come solicit money from here for relief. Because I always concern about how to balance things. Because some people in the community get disturbed. Every Jummah, every Jummah. If I allow people to come, every Jummah will be somebody here asking money. But I say, why? Look, people could not even, could not, they going in a kitchen trying to make a hospital. They going in a basement trying to make a hospital. Because they keep bombing all the hospitals, anything. They, they, hospitals, what's a hospital? Doesn't, they bombing everything. Okay, so I said, anybody after today asking me want to come to make fundraising for all these things, I'm going to let it, and the people can pay or not pay, it's up to them, okay? But we should be grateful to what Allah gave us, and especially about that you have peace, that you can go in sujood, and you can sit for five minutes or ten minutes in your prostration, no worry. Your worry is what? When I'm going back to office, when I'm going, you understand, go to play, when I'm going to watch this TV show. This is the only worry that we have. How are we going to behave? But those people could not prostrate without fear. Losing their life, losing their children, they, don't, they could not even sleep. Wallahi, kids. Wallahi, I, I left the conference crying like a baby. I could not. Only presentation, five minutes. You see it. You don't want to see anything else. Now this is, you see something on the screen. Can you imagine being living there? Can you imagine being living there? So let's be grateful that we have a mask. Let's be grateful that we have books. Let's be grateful that we can sit in the mask in peace. We are not worried about somebody going to drag us because I grow my beard or I look like a Muslim or that we gather in the mosque. Let's be grateful and show appreciation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we're going to be questioned. We're going to be questioned with no doubt. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help the Muslims everywhere. Amen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heal us all and heal them and help them. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring about peace and tranquility for everybody in this life and in the hereafter. Ameen. وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين. So should we eat first or should we work first? Eat first. You serious? I don't mind. Okay, what about you? Huh? No, we can put the food those who want to eat. They can eat those who want to work. They can work. Cough is not ready. Huh? Cough is not ready. Oh, okay. A good excuse. Okay, I don't think we can make the salah yet. It's at least 5.36, 37, at least 20 minutes before sunrise to make two rak'at. So if anybody wants to exercise, inshallah, that we're going to open the imam office and we'll try to take things <coughs> out. Okay? And those who want to take a break after uh, 20 minutes to make sunnah, they can do so, and those who want to take the break after 45 minutes to have their coffee, they can do, and those who want to stay, the mosque will be open for you, inshallah. I would like to be with Brother Habib and learn coffee from him. <laughs> this sounds good. Yeah. This sounds good. This is true. Sometimes we think it's something 
mine or somebody making the coffee. But it is very, I was thinking about it. You know, Brother Habib, he specialized in the, in the, what you call the lahd. Okay. And may Allah bless his life. If something happened to him, who's going to be? He always now sitting in the musalla doing like this. You understand? Serious. Okay. Who's going to learn to make the lahd when he could not do it? When, to go down in the grave and to try to dig the niche. We need everybody doing something in this mask. Okay. If the imam from the khutbah to Habib, the ditch, uh, whatever it is that somebody, we have about three, four people doing things in the mask, physical or whatever. It's supposed to be one or two people to start to spot and watch and ask for a training so we can replace each other. This okay. Islam is going to have to keep going. And Islam doesn't go, you understand, flying by itself. Allah can make it fly by itself. But Allah wants us to be the people who carry this. And anything small, it will help in the mission of establishing the deen. Somebody have to know how to make the grave. Somebody how going to perform a wedding. Somebody have to make a family consultation. Somebody sit in the zakah committee. Somebody sit in the cleaning. It has to be, if everybody said yes, I'm going to watch Brother Habib how to make the coffee, you are serving the Islam and serving the Muslim community. Inshallah. Somebody will know where is the vacuum cleaner, when is the hand towel, okay? When Habib is not there and the Imam could not drag his leg and get it, his legs out, okay? How I can take it and how I can open the dispenser without understanding a key. If everybody took one thing, even a small thing, our life in this mask will be much better than what it is. So please, anything that you can do, even if it's little, bring your children and let your children get involved because they are the ones who have taken over. Okay? After me and you go, inshallah, in peace, that they are the ones. And we have to get them involved. We have to get them involved <laughs> and we doing this for the sake of Allah. We are here to try to please Allah, serving the Muslim, okay? This is something pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, we don't have any secret meetings. We did not involve them in politics. We are not to understand about hurting anybody, not even hurting a cat, okay? We don't have to hide. I say my khutbah, my talk, record it every, in public by speaking. We have nothing to be scared. Be scared of your sins. This is what it is. Other than this, we don't have anything to worry about. May Allah reward your day. Zakumullah khayran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. Subhanakullah.